Hi, Graham here from Brogdon Lodge. We thought we'd do a small video clip on AI and foldings for your interest. If it's flashing, it's going. Okay. Yeah. Seaman arrives here every day about 12.30, either from Alabar or Woodley or YF Farms, and normally comes in a chilly bin at in cool temperature. So the seaman arrives about 25 mils in a vial. Uh, we tend to just give it a small uh, agitation to make sure that the sperm cells are, are spread evenly through the uh, syringe and then we just suck the 25 mils up into a, a single syringe. On the odd occasion where we get two vials we'll, we'll use two different syringes. Most and important things around this area are to do with temperature so that we don't give the sperm cells any sudden temperature shock and, and so most I'm importantly so the semen is not subject to any uh, direct rays of the sun. The other two keys. We tend not to uh, clip our mare's tails, we, we use uh, um, glad wrap around the tails and that keeps things uh, pretty clean. And the, and the third element to this that's absolutely critical is, uh, is hygiene and you'll see that we're pretty fussy around uh, this area as well. Keeping the mare's tail out of the way and then making sure that we wash the uh, vulva area uh, very thoroughly. The other part to this also is to make sure we don't get any water uh, transported into the uh, vagina of the mare so you'll notice we wash it and then we actually dry it quite thoroughly as well. I have a slightly different method. Uh, some people I put, uh, um, I don't actually put the pipette into the vagina uh, with my hand to start with. I actually enter the mare quite uh, quietly. Uh, then I have my pipettes in a sterilised area beside the crush. And just by lifting the arm I can open a small area and, and pop the uh, plastic pipette in underneath my, my uh, arm. Locate the entrance of the cervix uh, with a forefinger and then guide the plastic pipette uh, through the cervix. Usually goes in about six inches. Uh, and then I actually attach the syringe after I've got the um, pipette into the cervix, well into the cervix. And then gently uh, force the semen in through the syringe. Quite important you don't get too much air in there as well. Uh, and then I'll take the whole lot out. Uh, whip all that into the rubbish tin and uh, the job's pretty much done. So with foldings we prepare our mares the same way uh, but we actually use a folding alarm which we'll show you uh, a little bit further in the video but this is our vet from Cambridge Equine Paul Fraser attaching a folding alarm. Uh, we get these uh, out of the States. Uh, we have a receiver in our room um, that will activate to an alarm in the room or if it's not answered then it uh, goes straight to our cell phone. So we get no false alarms at all. Uh, we only get up once to uh, fold the mare uh, and we haven't had any instances where we've got up because the alarm is triggered um, uh, on a false alarm. So that's uh, when we're working full time that's pretty important to us. One of the wee tricks we've learnt with these folding alarms is that we actually attach them to the vulva uh, with a button in the early days before we used the button we had the odd one that would tear the vulva uh, and by using these uh, big shirt buttons uh, as you'll see in a moment uh, that has uh, eliminated that. So the alarm goes on one side of the vulva and then on the other side we attach um, another button and that goes uh, onto a magnet which is inside that little blue box and we'll be able to show you that in a few minutes. Again, the vet is pretty uh, careful around sterilisation and, and the mare has a local anaesthetic before this is attached, obviously, and you can see by the way the mare's standing quietly that uh, she's in no pain at all. That's just the finishing touches there, putting that last button on, um, and that's attached across to that wee blue box, so when that circuit breaks, it activates. We put it fairly high up on the vagina so that the mare can urinate without any problems um, and we find these don't agitate the mare at all and we attach them about five or six days before the mare falls. So here's the little box that's in our bedroom, the receiver, and the little green box on top is the uh, telephone attachment. 
and here is a typical falling alarm. We number them so we know which one we got. And you see that magnet comes out, sets that alarm off straight away. And it's a pretty simple method. Switch that off, switch it on again, and it reactivates. So the following alarm's gone off in the middle of the night. And by the time we uh, get dressed and get out to the mare, usually the, the feet are, uh, are just starting to uh, protrude. We just check that everything is in line, the legs aren't crossed, and that we've got a fairly normal uh, presentation. That's the first thing that we look for. Uh, we don't do a lot of pulling at this stage at all. Uh, you also get a bit of an idea when you get hold of the legs how big the foal's going to be. Uh, this one was particularly big. Um, and you'll just see, I'll just check that the nose is in the right place. And then we'll just let the mare get on with it for a few minutes um, and see if she can push that foal out on her own. Do you need to wait for her to have a contraction or what? She's As my wife has just mentioned, it's really important that you uh, don't pull when the mare's not contracting. So we wait for her to have contractions before we put any weight on. So here you see that the mare's got this foal fairly well out, but it is, uh, it is a big foal and uh, she is having a little issue with it. So we've just cleared the breeding bag away from the uh, nose, make sure the foal's got a clear air passage. And you can see that I just put a little bit of weight on when the mare, when the mare pushes. Um, once you get past those hips, it's pretty uh, pretty simple. Also, once the foal's uh, out, um, the mare will stay down on the ground for anything up to 10 or 15 minutes just to recover. We never um, separate the umbilical cord. We let that happen naturally, either by the foal getting up and moving away or the mare standing up. Um, at this stage, we give them a little bit of selenium in the mouth, um, a five-in-one shot, spray the navel with um, antibiotics <coughs> and then just leave nature do its course and next morning here we are with a good healthy life foal. So we hope that's of some interest and uh, that's how we do things at Brogdon Lodge at Cambridge.